Panthera Leo Aatrox. A panther cat, a member of the genus Panthera. Lions, jaguars, tigers, and leopards. And a cat that has conical, short, round, stout canine teeth. This is a lion. It is, uh, it was for a little while thought to be a giant species of jaguar due to the unusual skull morphology and characteristics of the lower jaw, but mitochondrial DNA has firmly placed it and confirmed it as a panthera lion beast cat. Now it is of an older generation lineage than the maimed lions that we know today from Lion King and from all of the African populations. It is also quite different from the Indian lion, which is also of that more recent African expansion. It is likely related to the Eurasian cave lions, and those that are depicted in the Shove Caves show cats that lack the characteristic mane. Now, to say that it didn't have a mane is hard to say. It probably had a rough like if you look at male leopards, male tigers have a bit of extra hair around their neck and around their jowls. Might be the similar design for this kind of cat. What's special about it is its size. It is absolutely gargantuan. For a wild creature, this takes a lot of effort and a lot of um, food to build and maintain a body, specifically a carniv carnivorous body, that is of this proportion. Uh, there have been fa lions found in Caucasus that seem to be about this same size. Panthera leofocillus seems to be approaching that same size. But currently, I know of this cat and the Machairodus giganteus um, skulls that to be approaching this same size. A 45 centimeters, 18 inches, that's a big old head. It had a very long, lean, leggy, lion, pantherin body type with a little bit slight, with slightly longer limbs, but its head, it, it was just big, bulky, stocky, thick. Bone deposition around the face, mouth area, suggesting a reinforcement of the food procuring end. This is also a tool for fighting. You know, lions, aside from other cats, have this social aspect to them, which was likely pre prevalent throughout their evolutionary history, including in the um, North American subspecies. They have this combative interspecies competition type of aspect to their uh, being, which is reflected in the fact that lions have bigger teeth than tigers. Uh, they just have to have bigger teeth in order to uh, be more efficient at competing with conspecifics. Other lions add a kill. Tigers eat alone, lions don't eat alone. Which is why there is not so much width um, as much as it's just bone reinforcement on the, on the already pre-existing bone structure. We'll look at its jaw. This is super thick bone. The, I mean, this is its chin, mouth, synthesis, symphysis area. It's, it's huge. It's absolutely bone shattering. Those teeth are really thick. They're like railroad spikes. I mean, they were meant for crushing the necks of like camels, young mammoths, horses, uh, giant sloths, and to compete with other fang-toothed folk such as dire wolves, saber-toothed cats, other lions, and giant short-faced bears.
coronoid process of his jaw is what gave people initially the kind of suspicion that this was a little bit different from a lion, but I think that's just because uh, of the slightly different morphology that Panthera atrox has due to isolation throughout its evolution, and also because of its adaptation for higher bite force. It holds a very, very large surface area for crushing action. Saber-toothed cats don't have the same morphology. Uh, theirs is much, much more reduced for a different kind of bite. But this is just very much, this is not a piercer. Um, skull, this is much more of a drive in and then crush um, like a vice, like a hydraulic press almost um, of a jaw. A very slow and very sort of deliberate application of immense jaw power on these really large canines. We'll look at these canines. Again, just again, the bone deposition around his maxilla give it a really sort of a, a, a wide um, area here. The root of the canine, which probably extends all the way to around here, it's just solidly uh, anchored deep inside of this bone, the, the maxilla, but also reinforced by extra thickness on this bone, on this already incredibly thick um, canine tooth, which is again, it's, you know, it's rather short, but the crushing and breaking power of this tooth, of this jaw would have been absolutely immense. And this is all to the service of the social aspect of lions in that this being a male, all male lions serve a very important purpose and that is the protection of their pride, their females and their cubs while they have tenure as kings of that territory. The male lions were tasked with predator control and territory patrolling. When a lion reached full maturity and full strength, he would have been a very useful force at a family dinner in order to keep other predators at bay, such as dire wolves, such as saber-toothed cats of the genus Smilodon fatalis. And then of course there was the giant short-faced bear that stood towered over the big lion, very formidable adversary for any lion pride and let alone for any single lion to fend off. I do wonder if uh, Panthera Aatrox combined forces or if basically lions of older species employed the same male coalition tactic as lions today. It would have been significantly advantageous to be two of these holding a territory, holding a pride, and then defending against a most likely solitary giant short-faced bear. And it is under those kinds of pressures that lions actually made it to this kind of spectacular expansion. We, we met lions in California, in North America for that matter, when people migrated from Siberia down the Beringia, down to North America. There was likely an interaction, there was likely a exchange of interactions between lions and people. People, after all, at that point were of the um, Homo sapiens species, one that was very attuned, I think, to the lion vibration, the panther cat, the saber tooth. All those things were tools on the landscape that would procure people meat. And people had a respect for this force on the land. I think that is all I'm gonna say for now about the atrocious king of the La Brea Tar Pits. This animal is from none other but Los Angeles. I thank you for tuning in. You're watching Skull Talk.